Hey, welcome back everybody to Fundraisers Friday. Super, super important stuff here today. The amazing Tony Bell, Mr. Nonprofit Consultancy is joining me. I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Okay, Tony, we're going to talk about brand building that builds community trust. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. Wow. Okay. I'm like, I can't wait to hear what you have to say about this because we're talking about fundraising. We're talking about branding. I think you're going to take me in a direction that I hadn't anticipated. And that's a good thing, right? Yeah, I think it, it is a good thing. And hopefully, you know, our, our viewers and listeners will be taking on a, an unexpected journey as well with today's conversation because we're going to really talk about the holistic approach to brand building and, and how that holistic uh, approach does indeed build community trust. Yeah. And when you get community trust, you get investment. You sure do. So that's where we need to really go. Again, uh, we want to make sure that we give a wonder, wonderful shout out to our partners and presenting sponsors. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, where we are today, already Friday, and your part-time controller. We have amazing co-hosts, and you're looking at two of them. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, joined today by the amazing Tony Bell. Okay, you're going to blow my mind because you're going to tell us nonprofit branding is more than just a flashy logo and tagline. Say it ain't so. <laughs> well, I think it is so across all industries. I think that's true of, of for-profit and, and non-profit is that, uh, you know, your branding is more than a, a flashy logo and a tagline. And I appreciate the opportunity, Julia, to have this conversation with you today around this topic. I mean, I'm not a marketing expert, but I certainly throughout the course of my career have had to deal with rebranding and discussions around mission and vision and how they do or do not connect to the communities that we're serving. Uh, and so already I'm like on slide four because <laughs> I'm talking about, you know, that holistic approach to your branding and, and your messaging. I mean, it needs to start somewhere and certainly a logo and a tagline or a first kind of introduction, if you will, uh, to your organization uh, and to your product. Now, some people aren't going to like that I said product, yeah. but when you think about your programs as being the product of your organization, aside from any micro enterprises that you might have, right? There are nonprofit organizations, you know, like the local 4-H here, I love buying candles from, like, you know, there's stuff that, uh, you know, nonprofits are doing in terms of micro enterprises that are really uh, super awesome and, and unique. But this is around, you know, when someone sees your logo and a tagline for your organization as a whole, what does that do? How does that resonate with them? Does it emote a feeling? Is it memorable? What are the colors? Are they are they current? Uh, are they are they um, you know, something again that kind of generates an emotion or or some type of uh, feeling of, of desire to connect with the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely the logo and the tagline have a lot to do with that kind of first moment of truth, that, that initiation, if you will, of interest. Uh, mm -hmm. But it goes so much farther as we look at, again, kind of brand credibility, and yeah. the other things that need to take place uh, inside and outside of the organization for folks to trust the brand and for the brand to demonstrate the relevance and community impact that investors are going to want to see. You know, I'm fascinated that, that we'd be having this conversation because it seems to me that fundraisers are oftentimes the people at the forefront of testing this, right? Of going out and then finding out that maybe folks in the community don't know what they do, don't know the organization, or worse, they're confusing the organization with yet another organization. And uh, that could be because of, you know, your the brand message is something as similar as a name. Um, it's a really interesting thing. And yet we're asking the fundraisers to be armed with so many things <laughs> and then to go out and then to have this branding issue. 
it's kind of heartbreaking, I got to say. Well, I, I think that this, this particular topic and conversation is really important for CEOs and executive directors and board members to kind of lean into and, and understand because to your point, fundraisers are on the front line doing the work uh, mm -hmm. and, and engaging with, with individuals. And in most cases, the logo and tagline are secondary to that work or those folks are not engaged in the decision making that takes place when there are changes in the brand or changes in, in, in taglines. Uh, so I, I think it's really important for those folks that are the decision makers for a nonprofit organization to understand that it really is, again, more than a flashy logo and a tagline. It also has, which we'll get into, a lot to do with culture and a lot to do with how your organization represents itself holistically to the community that you're serving, to your current investors and to your potential investors. Well, I, I love that. And I, I think it's an interesting conversation and I, I'd love to kind of, you know, drill down a little bit into that. When we talk about increasing the credibility and the relevance and earning trust, um, I'm fascinated that you would draw for our fundraisers and for the whole fundraising activity so much of a correlation to branding because I don't hear enough of us talking about that. Yeah, so I think when we talk about brand recognition and, and brand relevance and how that ultimately builds trust, there's a lot that goes into your messaging, uh, in your branding, uh, whether that be through newsletters, through social media posts, through blogs, whatever that is uh, that you're doing to promote and build awareness for your organization. Uh, the trust building takes place around the storytelling around how you are demonstrating your relevance in terms of doing the things that you have committed to do uh, for the organizations that you're serving, uh, talking, you know, leaning into transparency and ethics around fundraising and organizational operations. So there's all of that messaging that takes place within marketing. Uh, that is attached to the logo and the tagline that will build relevance and build trust, again, with the communities that you're serving and the folks that are investing in, in your mission and vision. Mm -hmm. You know, Tony, we've talked about this before. I live in the West. You live in the East. Um, in the Western United States, while we do have some states that are older, we don't have a lot of philanthropic organizations that are... Um, celebrating milestone marketing, right? Because we're new, right? We, we have newer organizations and structures and infrastructure. And one of the things that I am most surprised is when an organization hits a milestone, like 75 years in service, or even in the West, 50 years in service, is really something to, to celebrate. And that they don't, um, for that period of time or for that celebratory period, that they don't use that marketing. Because it seems to me that it is just such a great way to communicate to potential donor investors that you are a substantial organization, that you have weathered the storms and that you have a track record, right? And so before we move on, I'd love to ask you about that milestone marketing. Yeah, well, I'm glad that you brought that up because I have been involved in that type of milestone marketing where, you know, you are reaching even, you know, a five year mark even or a 10 year mark okay. uh, and, and really celebrating that. And, and that is a tremendous opportunity. And I think where some organizations might miss the opportunity really is just all around capacity and bandwidth and yeah. resources. But for those organizations that have the bandwidth and the resources to celebrate those milestones, uh, I've seen it done and I've seen it very, done very successfully where there is a banner added at the bottom of the logo that says, you know, celebrating five years or 25 or 50 years of service. Uh, there's, you know, email signatures that are changed that identify and recognize that. Uh, so I, I, again, really glad that you brought that up. Uh, because those celebration of milestones, 
again, create an opportunity, a touch point uh, for you to reach out to the market and, and your current donors and investors. And it provides you an opportunity, again, when we talk about the holistic approach to marketing and proving the relevance of the organization and, and you know, just kind of proving the value, uh, you can then reflect on all of that time and say, yeah. again, over the last 5, 10, 25, 50 years, this is what we've done to move right. the needle in our community on this particular topic or mission. Uh, so I'm really glad that you brought that up. I, I think it's really important for organizations to uh, take advantage of that opportunity, yeah. not only for the marketing aspect, but for their own empowerment and for their own mm. sense of worth and value to take the time to reflect on what they've accomplished and how they have played a role in that journey. Right. And I think that, you know, we, we talk about this, Tony, so much. 1.8 million registered nonprofits in the U.S. alone. There's a hell of a lot of competition, a lot of competition. And I know that we don't want to say that. And it's, it seems like kind of an untoward thing, but our donors and investors have a lot of choices, a lot of choices. And so we've got to be doing things that help put us forward in our best way. And that can really help um, foster those relationships um, and deepen them. And I, I just feel like it, this is such an interesting conversation to have because it, a lot of times, fundraisers are not, to your point, included in this conversation. And yet they're on the front line. They're the one going out and they're the one pushing, you know, that branding message and that branding promise. Um, so we've got to do a better job of understanding what it means, how it functions and, and where maybe we need to make some adjustments and not just, you know, another group. Yeah, well, I think that, you know, when when organizations look to make some type of shift in their branding, again, whether that be the logo or, or the tagline, uh, most organizations know the value of putting together focus groups uh, to kind of have a conversation around what's being proposed and what it might look like. Uh, and those focus groups should, of course, include, you know, your internal team members, as well as your external investors and external uh, clients. Yeah. Uh, so there's there's lots of opportunity. And that leads into, a, a, again, just kind of the overall brand credibility yeah. is community engagement in so much of what you do and allowing the community to participate uh, in your work and to be part of the conversation around the issues that, that you're tackling. I mean, that builds great brand credibility uh, and trust right there. Well, let's get into a couple more uh, of trust building items that you have. And 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 this is really interesting because some of them are going to be apparent and some of them are going to be maybe a little more unique. And so it's not a one and done thing, right? I mean, when you started off by saying, hey, it's more than just this, um, you know, sexy looking logo and shiny colors you've got to be looking at this more strategically. So let's talk about referrals because I feel like we don't use them enough. Yeah, well, I think that, again, generally speaking, uh, we're so grateful for the individuals that support our organization, whether that be through time, talent, or treasure. And we're often hesitant to ask for anything more than that. Uh, and so I think that that's where uh, sometimes we we miss opportunities to engage those folks, again, that are currently giving other time, talent or treasure to offer referrals. And around marketing, when we're talking about this, that referral is probably going to be in the form of a quote, again, a testimonial around what their experience has been like as a low, medium, high level donor to the organization, what their experience has been like volunteering for the organization, um, you know, for events, volunteering with the highest level of, of accountability, meaning serving as a board member, what does that feel like for them? Uh, so a lot of times we just, again, generally speaking, will be hesitant to ask those folks to do anything more than what they're already doing. 
but we certainly know that when you include referrals, great testimonials, and impact stories in your marketing strategy, they resonate with the community, both existing and future uh, investors to the organization. You know, I love that you even added that level in there of service because we don't do that. You know, we don't ask our board members or committee members or, or volunteers. I mean, some of our organizations will have the same volunteer for decades, you know, every Tuesday at two or whatever. I mean, people that like weave this into the fabric of their lives. I think that's a really powerful, powerful thing, not just um, certainly our clients, but the people serving the mission. Really and smart. See, yeah, and I see organizations now, particularly on, on LinkedIn, do a really great job. And we talked about milestones of the organization. I see them doing great work now around milestones within their teams. Or to your point, Julia, milestones around volunteers and, and taking the time. And again, this is all part of of marketing, right? It has to be scheduled, you know, only yeah. so many social media posts a week, right? So all of this is part of, of a timeline and a calendar of events that takes place in marketing, but they're celebrating the milestones, the 10 year anniversaries of volunteers or, or yeah. team members in the, in the organization. Uh, so again, when, when we talk about milestones, uh, which you brought up so beautifully, it, it expands beyond, you know, the organization in terms of its, you know, year of incorporation, but, you know, right. to those, those volunteers and, uh, and, and team members, and even to clients being served, I've seen just lovely, just heartstring, you know, stories of individuals that have been served by an organization for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And just the story of how this individual has grown because of, the services and the programs of the organization that's supporting them. Uh, and, and those are, you know, are, are spectacular. And, mm -hmm. uh, and certainly, again, create trust and build, mm -hmm. you know, relevance uh, for the organization and, and how it's improving the communities that they're meant to serve. You know, uh, I'm thinking about the hospital system and the volunteer, the legions of volunteers that go across North America in the hospital system. And they are some of the best at creating a, a journey for their volunteers. You know, the little, I've done, you know, I've been here for so many years or I've done so many hours, or I think of like their little pins that they get and that those pins are like bars of gold, right? You know, sure. um, it's a, I think that's a spectacular model to, to watch um, because they're so structured and, and you made that comment. This is not just something that you can do willy nilly. You have to be strategic. You have to have a plan. You have to dovetail it into your social media and uh, everything else. So yeah, I think it's an interesting aspect of the whole marketing thing. Let's go on to the next thing about building trust within your community. And you touched on this. We, we, we spent a lot of time, you know, around marketing, storytelling, culture, ethics, and transparency. Those are like big values. And I feel like sometimes we separate them out from fundraising, but then they always come back into fundraising. Talk to us about this. Yeah. So what one thing I wanted to, and, and this is kind of moving our current kind of conversation forward a little bit in, into this particular slide, but marketing and storytelling and empowering your team members to do that on their own. Uh, and giving them talking points and explaining to them how to do that effectively mm -hmm. on social media. What hashtags should they use? Our local AFP chapter, we, we are uh, going through a great renaissance right now with incredible new board members. And, and our new uh, kind of chair of marketing sent out, you know, marketing tips for us to organically mm -hmm. promote the chapter and very specific hashtags to use whether we're speaking about National Philanthropy Day or a monthly program or brown bag lunches, whatever it is, we were provided with very specific hashtags 
uh, and, and terminology to use around that. Uh, and what I think of immediately is a friend of mine that works for the Red Cross, who is now in Florida, uh, helping communities that are impacted by Helene. And so his posts on social media are his own, but they are proving the relevance and the importance of the Red Cross as he shows pictures and comments on his experience about being there and hearing the winds and, and struggling with the tornado warnings, uh, just like the residents are, but he's there by his own design right. to support these communities in the aftermath. And so, you know, I, I share that because when we talk about marketing and, and storytelling and, and, um, and all that goes into that, there's this super powerful organic part of, of marketing that you know, that increases organizational culture that can demonstrate its ethics uh, and its transparency through the voices of the team members that are on the ground doing the work. Right. Uh, so that's just I, a real life, real time example of, yeah. of how someone is, is sharing their experience mm -hmm. um, and, and, and proving the value Mm -hmm. uh, not only of themselves, of course, but of the organization that they are representing and, and the organization mm -hmm. whose work they're there to do. Right. And I love that. And I, I'm really, really glad. I mean, especially at this incredibly tragic time in, in the southern United States where we're dealing with a, an enormous natural disaster. We are in it right now. Um, certainly losses of life throughout many states. And Florida, you're you're coming to us from Florida, Tony, as we speak. So thank you for for calling that out and and drawing that line uh, for us here today on the nonprofit show. I also think that you brought up something really powerful, and that is is that we need to be training our teams so that when they are going out, just like your brilliant example of AFP, um, the AFP chapter. You know, what are the hashtags? What are some ideas? What is the content thread? look like how can we support that everything from reposting to liking or commenting you know building that behavior so mm -hmm. that we're supporting um our our work and and really navigating that i want to touch base quickly on something with you um and that is you bring up uh culture ethics transparency how do we weave transparency and, and those higher level values into our branding message when when we're like fundraisers and we're trying to, you know, create relationships in a different way and maybe feel like we don't have enough control in, in, in the way our organizations work. Well, I think that there's a lot of opportunity to piggyback off of, and I don't know if that's even a, a, a good term to use anymore these days, but but there are ways to, to kind of lead into <laughs> activities that take place uh, currently. So for example, October is historically Ethics in Philanthropy month, month with the Association of Fundraising Professionals. So there are ways to lead into that and be a part of that <laughs> messaging from AFP uh, where where you are sharing with your local community, this is kind of the message and, and the ethical behavior uh, expected from the Association of Fundraising Professionals and its members. We, as ABC Nonprofit, support these philosophies and, uh, and implement these strategies and beliefs in everything we do. So I, there are just ways to... Uh, maximize, again, things that are already taking place within the sector uh, to help folks understand that that's what you believe in and that's what you support. Uh, so that's one thing around ethics. Transparency, I think, is, you know, uh, again, annual report is, is a very obvious, you know, kind of annual opportunity to be totally transparent around what's going on in your organization. Uh, I think when there are challenges, that you're facing, not to be afraid to share with the community that you're facing challenges. Right. Uh, right. There's nothing wrong with being human. 
uh, in the work that you do. Uh, so, so I think, you know, that ethics and, and transparency and culture, again, we can, there are so many things that can be shared. There's so many blogs around, you know, what makes a good culture within an organization where you could share, you know, I, I read this great article and, and I'm pleased to say that within our organization, we do these things. Right. Um, right. I love that. And I, I, I love the whole, <laughs> that you, you called out piggybacking, which I think is great. Because I think, Tony, a lot of times we become paralyzed or inundated by the sense that we have to create everything from ground up. And I think the linkage or connectivity, um, piggybacking, whatever words you want to use, it's really intelligent. It's really, really intelligent because these thoughts are out there, right? They're going on. These discussions, to your point, you know, these there's... There's blogs, there's articles, there's videos. Oh my gosh. I and mean, we have nearly 1,200 you know, episodes of the nonprofit show alone where we've had guests talk about certain things. Mm -hmm. Drawing back to that content, I think is really smart. And I think it helps you know, propel us forward. So I, I, I hadn't thought of that in context of what we were going to be speaking about today. But I love that you brought that up because I think that does build trust. You know, with, without a doubt, and I'm so glad that you you spoke to just the abundance of content that exists yeah, within the nonprofit show. And and one of my favorite activities, and this can be done with internal team members, it can be done with investors, it can be done with volunteers, is go to the nonprofit show website, look at the vast array of topics, pick one have folks watch it, and then everyone convene for a roundtable discussion around what it is that they watched. What did they learn? And how could that be relevant in, in the space that they hold uh, for, you know, for your nonprofit? I think there's great opportunities there uh, to build credibility, to show your transparency, uh, and to show your ethical behavior uh, for those types of, of convenings where folks watch something that's around professional development or, or a topic of interest, then we all come together and talk about it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a modern book club. You know what I mean? It, I mean, it, it really, really is. Well, you know, Tony Bell, always an amazing opportunity to talk with you. Um, you are, as I mentioned, um, in the central part of Florida where there's so much going on. Um, as the storm, Helene, moves in through our country, um, especially in the South, there are going to be a lot of call and a lot of need for support in so many areas. I mean, it is um, daylight in the West now. It's been daylight in the East for, what, six hours, Tony? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, there's a lot to be done and our nonprofits are going to be rolling up their sleeves in so many ways. So sure. this was an amazing conversation to have at this moment in time um, because we schedule these things out. We don't just show up and start chit chatting. I mean, we see what looks like we do, doesn't it, Tony? But I was going to say, although we could, but you know. we could. That's true. We could. But, you know, we do. We are thoughtful about this and we do try and figure out what our viewers and listeners need and what our communities need and what what's the buzz and what people are talking about. So then to have this catastrophic situation happen, um, you know, here and now and we are living it. Um, it's really a powerful thing because our brands and our branding messages are going to be needed even more. Um, as we navigate this and we render aid to our communities and to our citizenry. So, um, Tony, ov obviously one of the best, the highlights of my week is any time I get to spend with you, but well, thank you awesome. ever so much. This has been great. Yes. Thank you, Julia. It's been a lot of fun. Hey, you know, another thing that we want to definitely link back to, are our amazing presenting sponsors. They include Blue Meringue, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, and your part-time controller. As we sign off, we send a message of support to so many Americans throughout the Southern United States as they endure this horrific storm and the aftermath of it. And we sign off with this message and it goes like this, to stay well, so you can do well. Thanks everyone. Have a restful and peaceful weekend.